Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, synaptic vesicle fusion. So, so far what we've done is we've discussed the proteins that are involved in docking the synaptic vesicles to the presynaptic membrane. What we now want to do is discuss the mechanisms underlying how this calcium signal which uh, arrives uh, at the um, well, at the docked synaptic vesicles, when an action potential arrives in the axon terminal, how this is going to cause uh, the fusion of the synaptic vesicle membrane with the presynaptic membrane. And then we want to look at uh, the different types of fusion that occur. Okay, right. Uh, so, basically, the important protein that is involved in sensing the change in calcium level is a protein that is within the membrane of these synaptic vesicles here. Okay, and it has a structure similar to this. It has these two important cytoplasmic domains. And this protein is known as synaptotagmin. Okay, so this is synaptotagmin. And generally, the synaptotagmin isoform that you find in uh, axon terminals of neurons is either synaptotagmin 1 or it's synaptotagmin 2. Uh, so there are actually 19 different isoforms of synaptotagmin, and not all of them even sense calcium, and so they're certainly not involved in uh, the release of neurotransmitter-containing vesicles. So, therefore, the synaptotagmin isoforms that are relevant to uh, synaptic vesicle fusion is uh, usually synaptotagmin 1 or 2. So we'll colour this protein in in green. Okay, so in green here, this is synaptotagmin 1 or 2. Right, so synaptotagmin has these two important cytoplasmic domains here. This one here, which is closer to the transmembrane region here, which is incidentally an alpha helix which spans the membrane. Uh, this is known as the C2A domain, and then this one that is further from the, um, from the transmembrane region, this is known as the C2B domain. Okay, and they are both what are known as C2 domains, okay, which is a structure within a protein which is capable of binding calcium. So these domains are capable of binding calcium. So when calcium comes in from the extracellular fluid, it's going to bind to these C2A and C2B domains. Okay, and what's going to happen is that free calcium ions are going to bind to the C2A domain, and two calcium ions are going to bind to the C2B domain. Okay, so overall five calcium ions are going to bind to each synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 protein. Okay, right. Uh, now, what does this do to these C2A and C2B domains? Well, you might be tempted to say it's going to cause a conformational change. That's always the answer in biology. It causes some sort of conformational change which then changes its function. Well, that's not the case in the case of synaptotagmin 1 slash 2. Um, basically, conformational changes are slow processes. They take time in order for the protein to change its shape. Um, this needs to be a really rapid change because you want uh, you want the um, the um, calcium signal to be coupled to synaptic vesicle release very very fast. You want it to be like that. Um, conformational changes are slow, basically. So um, basically, instead, the what the calcium does is it merely raises the electrical potential of the C2A and the C2B domain. I when you stick on all of this positive charge. I mean, these calcium ions, they each carry two positive charges. You're sticking on two calcium ions here, so you're effectively sticking the charge of four protons on there. You're sticking three calcium ions on here, you're sticking effectively the charge of six protons on there. So you're sticking a lot of positive charge onto these synaptotagmin proteins. Okay, and that raises the electrical potential of the synaptotagmin protein, and that synaptotagmin is now going to gain function, and it's going to be able to fuse the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane. Okay, right, so let's try and understand what activity does synaptotagmin actually gain, which is going to help it fuse uh, the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane. Well, 
it does a lot, basically. There's a whole list of things which are probably very, very, all very, very important. Indeed, if you block them in some way, uh, they all seem to impair uh, vesicle fusion. They don't get rid of it completely, but they reduce it hugely. So, firstly, synaptotagmin 1 slash 2, once uh, it's bound calcium, will bind to this protein syntaxin 1. So it binds to the syntaxin 1. That's going, you can imagine, to bring the plasma, uh, sorry, the vesicle membrane closer to the plasma membrane structures. Okay, so that's the first thing it does. Secondly, it seems to interact with this complexin protein in purple. And this is really important uh, to understand. Basically, we said before that the function of this complexin protein was to act as this clamp protein, basically. It was there stopping these coarse snare complexes from fusing the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane. Okay? Now, when synaptotagmin becomes active because calcium is bound to its C2A and C2B domains, what happens is it interacts with the complexin protein in some way. And the complexin protein changes its function completely. It stops clamping um, the uh, core snare complexes and stopping them from fusing. And it starts actually helping them to fuse the two membranes together. So it goes from having an anti-fusion effect to having a facilitatory fusion effect. So a pro-fusion effect, basically. Okay, and this is important to understand that complexin seems to have this dual role, both as the inhibitor of fusion before the action potential arrives, and also as a facilitator of um, membrane fusion once the action potential actually arises. And what you find is that if you remove complexin, if you do a knockout of complexin, you get hugely reduced vesicle exocytosis, basically. Uh, when you stimulate a neuron which has no complexin, you get um, the release of neurotransmitter reduced by 60 to 70 percent and that shows us the importance of this complexin protein in um, in um, well in facilitating the fusion of uh, the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane and you might say well surely if we knock out complexin it will no longer have its clamp function and therefore you'll get increased um, spontaneous fusion of vesicles, so you'll have no vesicles left when the action potential actually comes. Well, what we see is when we look at these neurons which have complex knockouts, they have the right number of vesicles in the readily releasable vesicle pool, but they don't release as much upon stimulation by an action potential. So complexin is really, really important to have this facilitatory effect when the synaptotagmin interacts with it. So it goes from having this clamp effect of reducing um, reducing the um, f fusion of the, well, reducing the core, stopping the core snare complexes from fusing the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane prior to an action potential arises, to having this profusion effect once synaptotagmin has actually um, activated it. Okay, so synaptotagmin so far we've seen that it interacts with syntaxin 1 and complexin, and through those two actions it's going to promote the fusion of the uh, synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane. Now, uh, in the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at another function of synaptotagmin and potentially one of its most important functions in fusing these two membranes together, which is its interaction with lipids in the plasma membrane.